Hello and welcome to section 2.5. These notes are a lot shorter than yesterday's notes because it's just one page, but you've seen that already. Alright, section 2.5 is about linear correlation and regression, so this is all that scatter plot stuff that you learned way back in Algebra 1. So it should just be a pretty quick review. Alright, first thing, a correlation is, and I'm sure a lot of you are yelling out the answer right now, a correlation is a relationship between two variables. And that doesn't mean that one variable causes the other one, it just means that the two are related to, the, to each other. Alright, so the first variable, x, there's two different things we could call it. Well, there's a lot of different things we could call it, but in this class we're either going to call it the input or we're going to call it the independent variable. Independent, because it does not depend on the other one for right now. That's what we're going to call it. Alright, the second variable, y, is called the output or the dependent variable. Alright, so basically the way that we're going to think about this, even though they don't cause each other, we're going to think about if we change one of the variables, um, we're going to see if it causes a change in the other variable. So it may or it may not. Alright, and then let's look at some examples of correlations on graphs. Alright, so we have three different types of correlations that we're going to talk about. Notice the word linear. These are all linear cor correlations, meaning that they all kind of form a line. Alright, so the first kind, once I say this, you'll know what all the other ones are, but the first one is a positive correlation, because if you look at all the, uh, the dots on the graph, they kind of go in the positive direction. It looks like they have a positive slope. They're all going up. Alright, the other one, now we all know what that is. This is a negative correlation. And that's because they all look like they're going down. So they're not, notice they're not all in a row going in the negative direction. It's more like you have a river and you threw some ping pong balls in it. And they're all just kind of floating downstream. So they're all going in a negative direction. And then the last one would be, that's right, no correlation. No correlation. Alright, so those are the three different types that we're looking at. Um, the next thing that we want to do is talk about approximating a best fitting line for data. So for number five, you've got a blank graph here, so we're just going to put a couple of points on it. Um, so let's put one here at negative six, negative eight, and we'll put another one here at negative six, negative five, and we're going to put one over here at negative four, negative six, and we'll put one at negative three, negative three, and one at zero, negative two, and one at zero, positive two, and let's put one at two, two as well. And then let's put one over here at, here, let's do it that way. So that's gonna be five, three, and we'll put one at four, five, and I think that's good enough for right now. So normally, you have two situations. I'll either give you a scatter plot, and you'll have to do this, or I'll give you the x and y numbers. Like, I'll give you an x-y table, and you'll have to plot them on the chart. Alright, so the first thing you need to do is find a ruler. So I happen to have... Well, it doesn't have to be a ruler. It could be a straight edge. So, what I'm going to use is a folder right here. So I'm going to take the edge of my folder and put it so that it looks like it's in the middle of the dots. So to me, that looks like it's about right there. And it's hard to tell because this isn't see-through. The see-through ruler would be better. So now let me sketch my line. It's very scientific. All right, and that looks like it's going through the dots. Luckily, mine happens to go through two dots, so this is going to make it a little bit easier. But it doesn't have to go through any of the dots. It just has to look like it's going through the middle of the cloud of dots. All right, so to write the best fitting line, that word line gives me a hint of, about what I need to do. I need to use what we learned yesterday about writing the equations for lines and take this graph and write an equation for this line that I just drew. So the, there are two ways you can do it. You can do it with point slope or you could do it with slope intercept. Slope intercept is just a little bit easier in this case, so we're going to do that one. Alright, so remember the y and the x don't change, so I just need to figure out what the slope is and what the y-intercept is. The y-intercept is going to be where it goes through the y-axis, right here. So it goes through at 0, so that means that my b is equal to 0. Now my slope is a little bit trickier, 
So what I need to do is pick two points on my line. And what I want to look for is points where it actually goes through an intersection. So not like here where it's the middle of the box because then it's going to be harder to figure out what the numbers are. But I'm going to pick like this point here and let's pick that point here just so we're not picking data points because your data points won't always be on the line. Alright, so now to find the slope, if you remember it's rise over run and rise talks about how far up you go and run talks about how far over you go. So I'm just going to count on the graph. So I'm starting here and I have to go up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and now I'm on the same level as this one. So I went up 7 in that direction. And now I have to count over to get to my other point, my x right there. So I went up 7, so I know my rise is 7, so let's write that down. And then my run, I go over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Well, that's convenient. Alright, so I also went over 7. So now I'm just going to simplify that. If you can, you won't always be able to simplify it. 7 goes into itself one time. So I've got my slope and my intercept, so now I just have to write my equation. It's going to be y equals, I know m is 1, so y equals 1x plus 0. Or I could just write, if I want to clean that up, I don't have to write the 1 in front of the x, so I could just write x. And I don't have to write plus 0 because it doesn't really change anything. So for this one, it's going to be y equals x. Alright boys and girls, that's it for today.